Today we're going to go over a very quick introduction to vectors. Now, what are vectors? Well, a scalar is something that just has a magnitude, like the number four is a scalar, or the quantity 100 degrees C, that's a scalar, or 50 meters, that's a scalar. A vector not only has a magnitude, but it also has a direction. So, you know, 50 meters that way, that's a vector. 50 meters east, 10 meters north, those are vectors. They have a magnitude and they have a direction. Um, mathematically, we tend to put an arrow over a variable if that variable is a vector. Just to remind us, this is a vector. It's not just a number. It's a number and a direction. Um, graphically, we can draw vectors as arrows that point in a certain direction, and their length is proportional to the magnitude of the vector. Now, we can add vectors together graphically. So, for example, if I have a vector A that's represented by this blue arrow here and a vector B that's represented by the yellow arrow, I can add them together simply by taking the first vector and placing the beginning of the second vector at the end of the first vector. Then my result is just the beginning of the first to the ending of the second. So this red vector here represents A plus B. Now it turns out that adding vectors commutes. If I wanted to find a plus b, I get the same thing if I calculate b plus a. So here I take b, and I place the a vector at the end of the b vector, um, and then the two of them together makes this red arrow, which is the same as that red arrow up there. So a plus b equals b plus a if a and b are vectors. So imagine, if you will, that a bird flies 100 feet north, then it flies 200 feet east. So we want to draw vectors that represent the sum of these two events and find the vector representing the total displacement of the bird's location. So let's let north be upwards, like on a map. All right, um, so there is the bird flying 100 feet north. Then it's going to fly 200 feet east. So I want an arrow pointing east that's twice as long as my arrow pointing north. So here's two arrows pointing north. So that's the length of my arrow pointing east. So now I'll just flip it, make it go east. But I want to add those two displacements to find the total displacement of the bird's location. So I will put the beginning of the east vector at the end of the north vector, and then the sum of the two is just the red arrow right here. So that red arrow represents the total displacement of the bird's position. Now, subtracting vectors is pretty much the same as adding them because a minus b is really just a plus negative b. So let's look at our b vector over here, our yellow vector. To, to turn b into negative b, I just have to flip the vector around. Boom, like that. So now I have negative b. So a minus b is just a plus negative b. So a plus negative b, and there's the result of a minus b. In two dimensions, I can uh, write my vectors down uh, mathematically in various different coordinate systems. In a polar coordinate system, we give two parameters. One is the length of the vector, and the other is the angle that that vector makes with respect to the x-axis. In Cartesian coordinates, we signify our vector by giving its x and y components. So here's my vector right here. It has an x component and a y component. Now, if I know the vector in polar representation, I can convert that into Cartesian coordinates. Um, my x and y components then are simply the length of the vector times cosine of theta and the length of the vector times sine of theta. Likewise, if I know the x and y components, if I know the vector in Cartesian coordinates, I can convert to polar. The length of my vector is just the square root of a squared, a x squared plus a y squared. I'm just using the Pythagorean theorem, right? Because the two components of my vector form a triangle, all right? And uh, the length of a hypotenuse I get just using the Pythagorean theorem. Now to find the angle, I just use trigonometry, right? Theta is the inverse tangent 
of a y over a x. Now, if you've watched the video on trigonometry, you'll know that that's not the end right there. We have to make sure that the answer we got, the theta that we got, is in the correct quadrant. And if it's not, we have to add or subtract 180 degrees. Um, you can review that in the trig video. Now, uh, in three dimensions, for Cartesian coordinates, I just have to add a z component. Um, the thing that's similar to a polar coordinates in three dimensions we call spherical coordinates, but we aren't going to be using spherical coordinates in this course, so uh, we won't be talking about them today. All right, now unit vectors. A unit vector is a vector that points in some direction, but it has a magnitude of one. It has a length of one. It is one unit long. So for example, if I have a vector r, so here's our vector with a little arrow over the top to remind me that's a vector. If I take that vector and divide by its length, now I have a vector that points in the same direction as r, but it is only one unit long. And so that's my unit vector. And we usually use a little caret or hat on top of the variable to let us know this is a unit vector. Now there's some special unit vectors that we use a lot and we call them i hat, j hat, and k hat, or sometimes they are referred to as x hat, y hat, and z hat. And these vectors are just unit vectors in the different Cartesian directions. So i hat is a vector in the x direction with a length of one. j hat is a vector in the y direction with a, a length of one. And k hat is a vector in the z direction with a magnitude of one. So I can represent any vector now using these unit vectors, right? So rather than using parentheses and commas, I can just say, look, this vector has an x component in the x hat direction, in the i hat direction, in the x direction, plus a y component in the y direction, j hat, plus a z component in the z direction, k hat. All right? Now notice, what are the units of unit vectors? Unit vectors are unitless. Kind of weird, but uh, they're one unit long. They are not one meter long. They're not one, uh, I don't know, gauss long. They're not one meter per second long. They're just one unit. They are unit vectors. So, for example, if I wanted to find a unit vector in the r direction, I take r and I divide by its magnitude. Its magnitude has the same units as the vector. If the vector is four meters that way, its magnitude is four meters, and so when I divide them, the units cancel out. So unit vectors have no units. Now, adding and subtracting vectors, we showed how to do that graphically with arrows. I can do it mathematically as well. If I have a vector a, which is 2i plus 4j hat minus 6k hat, and a vector b, which is 3i hat minus 7j hat plus 3k hat, what is a minus b? Well, I just write these algebraic expressions down. So a is just 2i hat plus 4j hat minus 6k hat, and then I'm going to subtract from that b, which is 3i hat minus 7j hat plus 3k hat. And i hat, j hat, and k hat, they're just constants, all right? So I can expand out the parentheses and then uh, pull together the components of i, the components that go with j, and the pieces that go with k. And I end up finding, oh, a minus b is just negative i hat plus 11j hat minus 9 k hat. Now what is the magnitude of a minus b? Well, we already found what a minus b is. How do I find the magnitude of that? Well, we indicate the magnitude of a vector by putting lines, vertical lines, on either side. So the magnitude of a minus b we would write like this. And the magnitude of a vector is we just use Pythag the Pythagorean theorem to find it. It's just the square root of the sum of the components squared. So this would just be the square root of negative 1 squared plus 11 squared plus negative 9 squared, which is the square root of 203, which is about equal to 14.25. So now we know how to add vectors together. How do we multiply a vector and a scalar? Well, if I have three times a vector, that means that vector plus that vector plus that vector, right? We're adding it together three times. But if I add the same vector together three times, I just stack them together and I end up with a vector which is in the same direction, but three times as long. So I just multiply the length by the scalar. So in polar coordinates, if I have some vector a, which is 
a magnitude of a going in the theta direction, f times a, where f is a scalar, to get that, I just multiply the magnitude of a times f. In Cartesian coordinates, I have my, you know, a written in its x and y component, or if it's three-dimensional, it's its x, y, and z components. If I multiply a by a scalar, each component simply gets multiplied by that scalar. Now, so that's how we multiply a scalar times a vector. How do I multiply a vector times a vector? Well, it turns out that there's two different definitions of vector multiplication that we will use in this class. The first is known as the scalar product, the dot product, or the inner product. They're all just three different names for the same thing. And the, the dot product of a and b, we write like this. I have my vectors a and b, and there's a dot between them. That's why we call it the dot product. And the dot product of my two vectors is just the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them. So I draw my two vectors and I measure the angle between them. The dot product is just a, b times cosine of the angle between them. Now, does this commute? It does. Yes. A dot B is the same as B dot A because when I when I swap A and B, my my angle just reverses sine, right? Instead of going from here to here, now it goes from here to here. But cosine of negative something is the same as cosine of something, right? So the scalar product does commute. Another way you can write the scalar product is it's just the sum of the products of the different components. All right, so this, this gives you the same answer as this. Now, what does this mean? Well, for example, if one of my vectors is a unit vector, it extracts the component of the other vector in that unit vector's direction. So for example, a dot j hat, all right? I just take the x component of a times the x component of j hat, which is zero because j hat is a unit vector in the y direction. And then I add that to the x component of a times the, or sorry, the y component of a times the y component of j hat, which is just one. And then I add that to the z component of a times the z component of j hat, which is zero. And I'm just left with the y component of a. So by dotting with a unit vector, I can find the component of a vector in uh, the unit vector's direction. So, for example, if I have some vector a, and I want to know what is the component of a in the direction of b, how would I do that? Well, what do I mean by the component of a in the direction of b? Well, I can write a here as a sum of a vector in the same direction of b plus a vector orthogonal to b at a right angle to b. And I want to find that component of a right there. So to find the component of a in the b direction, I just take a and I dot it with a unit vector in the b direction, b hat. And how do I find that unit vector? Well, b hat is just b divided by the magnitude of b. So here's some examples. If I want to take the dot product of a and b, and a and b are equal to these things, well, a dot b is just the x components multiplied together plus the y components, 4 and minus 7, multiplied together, plus the z components, which are negative 6 and 3, multiplied together. So uh, 2 times 3 is 6. 4 times negative 7 is negative 28. Negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. I add them all together, and I get minus 40. Notice that the result is a scalar. That's why another name for the dot product is the scalar product. I multiply two vectors with a dot product, and the result is a scalar. Now, there's another type of vector multiplication, which we will do in this class, and that's the vector or cross product. A vector product or a cross product of two vectors returns a vector, not a scalar. The magnitude, uh, we, we write the cross product as A times B, right, with, a, with an X in between them. That's why we call it a cross product. And when I take a cross b, I get a vector. The magnitude of that vector is equal to a times b times sine of the angle between them. And you find the direction of that vector using the right-hand rule. So let me show you how the right-hand rule works. If I want to take the cross product of this red vector with the blue, so red cross blue, what I do is I put my fingers in the direction of the first vector with my palm facing towards the blue vector such that I can rotate my hand palm-wise from the red vector to the blue vector. When I do that, then my thumb 
points in the direction of the cross product of those two. So for example, if I were doing green cross blue, right? So if A is green and B is blue, I would put my fingers in the direction of the green arrow, then move my palm, moving the, my palm forward, go to the blue arrow, and my thumb is now pointing out of the screen. So green cross blue points out of the screen. If I do blue cross green, then I have to put my fingers in the direction of the blue, move my palm towards the green, and I always do that the shortest way I can, all right? And when I do that now, my thumb points into the screen. So blue cross green's direction is into the screen, and the magnitude is magnitude of blue, magnitude of green, times sine of the angle between them. Now, does the cross product commute? No, we found it didn't, right? The green cross blue was out of the screen, and blue cross green is into the screen. In fact, it anti-commutes, meaning that A cross B is equal to negative B cross A. Now, when is the cross product used? In this class, we're going to use it when we talk about torque and rotational motion and things like that, angular momentum. Um, it's also used, it's related to the area of parallelograms. You'll see it a lot when you do electromagnetism and so forth. Now, there's also an algebraic way of writing the cross product, um, and it's a bit more complicated than the dot product. Remember, the dot product was I just multiply the x components, the y components, and z components, and then add them all together. With the vector product, it's a little more complicated, but there is a pattern here. I take my unit vector in the x direction times ay times bz, so xyz, and then I subtract with these two uh, flipped, z, y. So I went from y, z to z, y, all right? So it's x, y, z, and then flipped. And then here's my vector in the y direction. So y, z, we're going alphabetically, y, z. Now z is the end, so I go back to x. So y, z, x, and then I flip those two. And then to get the z component of my cross product, I go z, then wrap back around to x, then y, so z, x, y, minus y, x. So hopefully that helps you remember the, how to write down a vector product algebraically. Another way you can remember it is by doing um, determinants. If you've done uh, linear algebra and you've learned about determinants before, a cross b is just the determinant of the unit vector i hat, j hat, k hat, um, a, x, y, x, a, a, Y, A, Z, B, X, B, Y, B, Z, all placed into a matrix like this. So if you haven't seen determinants before, just I'll show you how you do them, all right? So I'm going to put I hat, J hat, K hat, then my different components of A, then my different components of B. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the different diagonals. So here's my first diagonal going this way. I'm going to take I hat times A, Y times B, Z. There we go. Then I'm going to take my next diagonal. I'm going to move over, and now I have a diagonal that goes through the J through AZ, and then it wraps around over here, goes through BX. So JZ times AZ times BX. So I add that in. Then I go to my next diagonal, K hat times AX times BY, and I stick that in there. Okay, so now I've done all of the diagonals down to the right. Now I'm going to do the backwards diagonals and, and subtract those. So I'm going to take this one right here, K hat AY BX, so negative K hat times AY times BX. Then I'm going to take this negative uh, diagonal here, uh, j hat times ax times bz. Then my final negative uh, product is i hat az by. And there it is. And if you rearrange the terms, if you gather the i hat terms together, the j hat terms and the k hat terms together, it looks like the equation we had before. And that is the end of our discussion of vectors.